So uh, we will start. So I'm introducing today, um, well, I think most of you know him already, Silvanus Ocho. He's uh, been working with us for over two years now, leading all of our work in post-harvest here in uh, Latin America. Uh, before that, he did his PhD at the University of Liège in Belgium, uh, focusing on the effect of drying processes on maize grain quality. And today he will tell you all about his work uh, with us. Okay. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm glad to present you part of our work in the post-harvest coordination in the integrate of the integrity development program. Thank you very much. So, uh, with uh, the objective, our objective is to reduce post-harvest losses in, in smallholder farming system. It is important to mention here that we are focusing only in smallholder farming system. Not meaning that uh, big, large farmers that uh, don't have problem, but the objective of Masagro is mainly for smallholders. So we are just tackling this problem uh, regarding only smallholder. So before starting, I would like to define a little bit uh, what is the post harvest system. There is still some controversies internationally, but I think that everybody agrees that post harvest includes all of the operation between harvest uh, and the place of consumption. It's called post harvest, but it also includes harvest. It's like this. You know? So it includes activi technical activities like harvesting, uh, shelling, drying, storage, but also processing, but, you know, which is considered a second level of, of post harvest. Here in CIMIT and in general, we, we won't tackle this, this part of the second processing level. We are just focusing on, uh, between, uh, on harvesting, from harvesting to, let's say, macro storage. No. With the objective to preserve grain quality, it is really important here to mention that post-harvest cannot improve the quality of the grain as quality is an intrinsic factor that comes with the grain. And so the only thing that we can do is to maintain the uh, the quality of the grain throughout the post-harvest chain. Something also really important is that uh, post-harvest strengthen food security of, of smallholders. I will talk later about the relationship, the relationship between uh, post-harvest and food security. And also, it, cannot, it can maintain grain quality, but it can, improve, it can improve commercial values. You know, for example, uh, uh, simple operation like uh, cleaning on win or win can improve greatly the commercial value of grain uh, while I mean it is it is just uh, put it in uh, in the market uh, I mean following the market norm uh, okay so uh, post harvest is related to the four dimension of the food security meaning uh, availability stability access is utilization so why uh, Post harvest handling is directly related to stock level, you know? and also uh, post harvest management have, uh, uh, has an impact on price, vi uh, price volatility on, on market. And also, uh, when we talk about stability, for example, post harvest structure and transport infrastructure uh, contribute in making food accessible through throughput period of abundance, but also uh, after a crisis like a uh, prolonged period of, of drought uh, or after a natural disaster, for example. And also post-harvest activities have a direct impact on nutritional value of, of corn, of, of, of food, uh, as uh, a good post-harvest handling is related to the, uh, is a prerequisite to maintain, uh, to avoid quality losses due to insect pest and insect, rodent, and fungi. So uh, here in Mexico, post-harvest problems and practices are diverse. In the diagnostic made by CIMIT between 2013 and 2016, it was noticed that farmers used to dry their grain on field, which is normal because we have a lot of sun here, so no need to, to uh, uh, an improved drying process because drying costs a lot of money. So. Since farmers have little opportunity to monitor grain quality on field, then insect infestation start, on, start right there. No? And also, in such a kind of system, timing of harvest is really important. With possibility development of fungi, 
if harvest occurs at the moment when grain is too moist. Uh, there is also, uh, harvest is also uh, a time consuming activities in such a kind of system. And because there is a lack of harvest at a small scale level. So this, due to the lack of, of uh, manure, this bring farmers to delay these activities and also increase post harvest losses. With insect and, insect and fungi infestation starting from field, uh, these pests could develop themselves and increase post-harvest losses without an efficient shelling process. But here in Mexico, uh, in Mexico we still have farmers that use uh, what they call piedra to, to, uh, to shell grain. So this leads to a high percentage of broken grain, uh, as we can see here. So cleaning and uh, winnowing uh, can by removing foreign matter can contribute in reducing post-harvest losses, but this operation is not systematic. In Mexico, farmers used to, dry, uh, used to store the, the, the grain during several months using a variety of, of storage technologies, including polypropylene bag, but also traditional wooden structure, structure meaning troje, what we call troje, troje here. And we can see here that rodent, there is a lot of damage from, from rodent in, in Troje. Also, there, there are a lot of farmers here that use a metallic drum. So additionally, some farmers may use to treat their grain with uh, insecticide or fumigant, and little is, is known about uh, the effect of this pesticide on their health. For example, in the south of Mexico, farmers used to use aluminum phosphide tablet uh, at a dose of one to three uh, tablet per 50 kilogram of uh, 50 kilogram of grain, while the recommended dose is, is four to six pellet per ton. So it is really input, really high. So, and nobody knows the effect on on health. No. So all of this contribute to post harvest losses, which is estimated to be d between 10, uh, 10 and 40 percent. Estimation of post harvest losses is really difficult and complex, but with the data that we have, we can estimate that in a tropical condition, uh, post-harvest losses can be more than 40%. So what is the vision of CIMIN and its collaborators? So first of all, we would like to tackle a uh, problem through all of the operation of the post-harvest chain, starting from the timing of harvest with uh, what we would like is farmers to harvest the, the grain at an appropriate moment using low-cost technologies, and also dry with low-cost technology. Also, shelling is also an issue that we would like to tackle using technologies, for example, like this. So, for example, in the post-harvest coordination, we are working with the mechanic mechanization unit of, of the IDP program. Regarding storage, we would like also farmers to use low-cost efficient technologies that maintain grain and seed quality, but also that that, that don't have uh, adverse effect on their health. So we use to focus our work on hermetic technologies. So what is hermetic technologies? It's work uh, with a very simple uh, principle. So basically, these are uh, barrier, hermetic technologies are barrier that stop exchange of uh, oxygen and moisture between the grain and its environment. So biological activity inside the, the container will increase, uh, the, will consume oxygen and increase the level of carbon dioxide. So as a result, uh, most of the living organism will become inactive or will die through desiccation because no availability of oxygen. So it is a very simple, uh, it is a very simple system that works very well in controlling post-harvest pests. As an example of the of a hermetic technology, we have the hermetic metallic silo, which is a cylindrical tank made of galvanic sheet that when it is hermetically sealed, is efficient in protecting a grain against pests. You know? As far as I know, Mexico is the only country in the world that have a norm, a norm that define the manufacturing process of hermetic metallic silo and that works solely on the principle of hermeticity with uh, a conical, a conical, uh, super, a superior conical cup and a bronze plug. It is really different uh, when compared with 
silos that was promoted by FAO here in Central America. Another hermetic technology is the hermetic bag, which is a multi-layer polyethylene, a resistant polyethylene sac that when it is hermetically sealed, cut off uh, oxygen to pests so that it also works very well in controlling pests uh, such as insect and fungi. However, the uh, uh, cost of acquisition of these technologies are still high, and a lot of smallholders cannot afford it. So uh, an alternative is to use recycled containers, such, such as, for example, this plastic bottle or this, pla uh, this plastic barrel that can also be hermetically sealed in order to preserve grain. Another innovative way to control post-harvest species is to use inner dust, which are uh, irritating, abrasive, and desiccating agents that damage cuticular waxes of insects when it is mixed with grain, as we can see here. So uh, example of, of inner dust are micronized lime and diatomaceous earth. The use of lime here in Mexico has been reported uh, in the, uh, the use of lime by Aztec of ancient Mexico has been reported. So it is a technology really interesting for here, uh, for, uh, for, for Mexico, as most of the, the grain is used for nistamalization. Because if we want to sell this grain in the market, when grain is mixed with, uh, with uh, micronized lime, it will decrease the, the commercial value. So for grain that will, that will be used for nistamalization, in net dust like micronized lime could be uh, a low cost solution. So uh, uh, temperature and, and relative humidity are important parameters in post harvest. So what we do is we monitor the evolution of these parameters inside different storage containers, meaning polypropylene bulk, which is the farmer's conventional method, hermetic metallic silo, grain pro hermetic super uh, bag, and also an alternative technologies, an alternative hermetic technologies, uh, the plastic bottle. So as we can see here, the graph uh, presented uh, the average daily temperature inside storage container, um, container and outside, meaning uh, inside the, the bodega. So we can see that temperature follow the same trend in all of the technologies, and there is no significant difference between all of the continents. Well, regarding relative humidity, it is not the same. So we can see here that in hermetic metallic silo, uh, in hermetic uh, bag, and also the plastic bottle, there is more or less, uh, there is no variation, more or less. But in the, in the polypropylene bag, we can see that there is a lot of a lot of variation. So these may have an impact on the quality of the grain and the seed. Yeah, it is important to mention that there is a difference between seed and quality. You know? But what made a good seed? But, uh, generally, uh, farmers are interested in the potential of, uh, seed is used for sowing, uh, multiplication, and reproduction, reproduction of a plant species. So farmers are interested in the potential of, of the seed to give high yield. So important parameters here are germination, but also after germination, we check for uh, viability, vigor, and uh, emergence. There's also uh, an important uh, component related to seed health, which is a ph uh, phytosanitary component, for example, checking for seed borne disease. While regarding grain, uh, they are used, uh, grain uh, uh, is used for food and feed but also as a raw material for the industry. So important parameters here are chemical properties, for example, the composition of, of, of the grain, but also physical properties as it is intending to processing. Sensual characteristics here are also really important as, for example, the color of, of the massa, the nistama, of nistamalization is something really interesting for farmers. So checking for the impact of storage technologies on this parameter would be, uh, is, is one of our objectives. So through Masagro uh, and other projects here in, in Latin America, we use the herb infrastructure. You, everybody knows what our methodology, but basically 
everybody, uh, everything starts with a diagnostic where, where we, if we identify uh, with a diagnostic that there is some post-harvest problem uh, in a place, then we start evaluating post-harvest technologies in platform that are basically for basic research. You know? So after that, we go for modules, uh, which are side-by-side -side comparison between the farmer's conventional method and an innovation method that we are pro promoting. So after that, we move to extension area, uh, which are where farmers are not doing any more research but they embrace uh, a technology promoted by, by the project. They also says as visual, how can I say? Because uh, extension area is also a place where farmers used to make a lot of exchange for the local community, meaning using for promotion uh, of the technologies. So every, uh, this infrastructure is intended to generate some impact area inside the local community. So between 2016 and 2018, meaning that post harvest is a recent strategy inside the Massacre project, uh, we have uh, some assets in 33 states of Mexico with 26 cycle of plat platform. I say, I say cycle of platform because it does not need 26 place, meaning that we can, we can, we, we, we did some, some, investigation in the same place to see a uh, variation related to year. 154 for modules and 427 extension area. So this generated a lot of data, a lot of heterogeneous data that, uh, that is really difficult to analyze. Thank you very much to Juan who helped us in analyzing the data. So what we decide to do is to divide our database into two different databases. So what we consider as control condition of experiment and what we consider as non-control condition. In control condition, we consider that there is a close follow-up of, of the assays with repetition of storage containers, while in non-control condition, it is in the house of the farmers without, uh, with, let's say, with no repetition and less follow-up of the condition of, of, of the experiment. So what do we do? So we evaluate storage technology, storage technology in different environments here in Mexico. We collect it sample at the beginning and at the end of the experiment. And we evaluate different parameters, starting from the, uh, the post-harvest losses. For example, percentage of insect damaged grain, percentage of fungi damaged grain, but also a lot of lot of other parameters like, for example, the count of live maize weevil, live large grain borer, and large uh, uh, number of live uh, may, uh, angumua grain mud, which are the most important insect that attack, that attack uh, grain here in Mexico. Insect damage uh, grain are grain that present perforation, uh, as we can see here, while fungi damage grain are grain that present in its surface uh, partial or total development, development of fungi mycelium, generally characterized by a discoloration. We also check for seed quality, mainly germination and, and normal seedling. We also check for the, the composition of the grain and its relationship with post-harvest losses, but also some grain quality parameter, some physical parameters, for example, 100 kernel weight, flotation and there's chemical parameters like ether extract and acid value, but also for sensorial characteristics such as color. I will explain why, uh, further why we, we choose this data. So here I will just present result uh, of Texcoco, which, uh, which is located at 2,282 meters above sea level, which is the, the high uh, in altitude platform, and also result from the P2 platform, which is located in Yucatan uh, around, let's say, uh, at sea level, because it is around 30 meters above sea level, I think. So in Texcoco, instead damaged grain, the percentage of instead damaged grain are not so important, around 4%. You know? Even though we noticed uh, a significant difference between the polypropylene bag and the initial sample and the other technologies. The damage are not so important. 
Regarding fungi damage grain, there is no significant difference. Res results are not the same in, in PETO. Uh, you can check here the difference in scale. No? So here in PETO, you can notice that damage were, was more important with more than 40% of insect damaged grain in the polypropylene bag. So it is interesting, we can, we can, we can say, he, we can notice here that uh, micronized lime succeed in, in controlling post-harvest space. Uh, and also there is no, at least no damage in, in hermetic bag and hermetic silo. Regarding fungi damage grain, percentage of fungi damage grain also, there is no significant difference. Okay, so as I say, all of these generated a lot of data, a lot of data, proportion data that are not normal, uh, count data that are follow the, the Poisson, the Poisson lay. So to analyze this data, it is really difficult. So uh, a good solution is to, to use partially square correlation to see the relationship between all of these data. We also collect some environmental uh, environment uh, condition data so that are highly correlated. So when we check for the correlation loading plot here, uh, we don't have, I mean, the S square is not so important. The S square is not so important, but at least we can check for parameters that are correlated. For example, here we can see that uh, weight losses is, co is weight losses the live maize weevil, the number of live maize weevil at the end, the number of large grain borer at the end are related, are correlated. Interestingly, we can also see that the percentage of fungi damaged grain at the end of the experiment is related to the, the, the percentage of fungi damaged grain at the beginning of the experiment. No. Yeah, here it is really clear because we can see uh, with the variable importance plot in control condition, the, the parameters that are more important. So we can see it is considered that uh, a variable importance more than 0 0.8, when it is more than 0 0.8, it is considered that it is something really important. So in control conditions, we can see that uh, Max, uh, the, what is it? The monthly average maximal relative humidity is an important parameter. Also, the number of live maize weevil at the beginning, not important, but large grain group, but the large grain, the number of large grain border at the beginning is really important. Large grain border, uh, call it in, in Spanish, barrenador, are uh, really taught post have a space. They are, they, they, are cap, they are able to, they can, they can perforate bags. There are really tough post harvest species and they produce a lot of flowers. So it is a pest, really, how can I, an important pest in, in small holding farms, farming, in small holding farming system. A lot of, all of these parameters, the most important parameters, we can also check that altitude is also something uh, significant, but again, altitude is related to temperature, so these are highly correlated parameters that work it on the same way. Regarding, regarding uh, technologies, we can see that the use of uh, polypropylene bag have, you know, if you are using polypropylene, polypropylene bag to store your grain, then it is, it has a significant impact on the, uh, on the percentage of, of damage at the end. But also, hermetic technologies also work very, I mean, here, hermetic metallic silo, hermetic bag have significant results. I would like to draw, to draw your attention here, no, regarding uh, the use of aluminum phosphide tablet. Here, we, we can notice that it also have an impact, no, meaning that if you are using aluminum phosphide tablet, then you are reducing your post-harvest losses. But this is with trained technician. Let's see the result for when it is in non-control condition. In non-control condition, seeing the correlation loading, we can also see that not a lot of the air square is really low. But again, we can notice that the percentage of, of fungi damage grain at the end is related to 
the percentage of fungi damage grain at the beginning. And also polypropylene bag is related to percentage of, of insect damage grain and also the life, uh, the life, the number of live maize weevil at the beginning. Checking for, for variable importance plots in non-controlled condition, remember that I was saying that uh, the use of aluminum phosphide was effective in controlled condition. But with farmers' condition, I mean in non-controlled condition, the use of aluminum phosphide is not effective. Meaning that even if they are still using aluminum phosphide, they still have a lot of post-harvest losses. Checking for important parameter, we have the, the, the fungi, I mean, the, the percentage of, of, uh, of uh, fungi damage grain at the beginning, but also the number of live maize weevil at the beginning that are important parameters. The use of polypropylene bag still is uh, an important part, factor. Again, here, we can also notice uh, that hermetic technologies work very well, but not uh, so efficient. When, I mean, the variable importance is not so important in non-controlled condition when we compare with control condition. Meaning that here, training play a very, very important role. I mean, bringing silos to, to farmers is not, I mean, it won't solve the problem if they don't have a very good training on how to use these technologies. We can notice here that the use, there is two kinds of hermetic bags. The, the one with tie and the one with ziplock. So the one with ziplock was not so effective, meaning that, I mean, the, the, there is a training component which is really important. So when we check for seed quality parameters, remember that in, Texo in Texcoco, there was not important damage. So we can see here that germination was quite high, uh, more than 90% but also Norman City was also really high. It's not the same story in Peto, Yucatan. So while hermetic technology is succeeding in maintaining green quality, uh, seed quality parameters, it is not the same for polypropylene bag, where we notice a significant decrease in, in germination and normal seedling. But we also notice the same with uh, polypropylene bag with micronized lime, which, so, this technology succeed in controlling post-harvest pest, but not to maintain seed quality parameters. So the fact that this technology is not uh, hermetic may explain this result. So uh, we, we, check, uh, we check for correlation. I, I just present some small, small results. There's a lot of results, so I just present some interesting results. No. So we check for correlation between composition and PHL. So I will, here I will just present a result related to pecumaric acid and phenolic acid. So why? Because these phenolic acid are related to the resistance of grain to post-harvest pests. Now CIMIT, da, uh, CIMIT did, did a lot of work at the beginning of the 90s where they, basi they basically show the role of pecumaric acid but mainly phenolic acid in uh, avoiding post-harvest losses because these phenolic uh, acid uh, have uh, uh, play an, an antibiosis role, but also are antifeedant, meaning that if the percentage of phenolic acid is really important, then post-harvest losses will be really low. So this was the result uh, that CIMIT found at the beginning of the 90s. So I checked for correlation between post-harvest losses and phenolic acid and cumaric acid. So you can see here that problem is starting because we see the po a positive correlation, meaning that, well, high percentage of, of, of ferulic acid is correlated with high percentage of insect damage, which is totally the contrary. But as I say, uh, first of all, I want to mention that correlation is not causation, so with whom, with whom we are looking for more advanced analysis. But I check for uh, partial correlation, taking into account, for example, storage technologies. as. CIMI studies published at the 90s were laboratory studies uh, here in Batan. So we check for I checked for partial correlation between insect damage and, uh, and cumaric acid and total ferulic acid, and hopefully no relationship. So I was more or less, I mean, going, uh, saying the contrary of what studies that people uh, did at the beginning of the night, I was really afraid. But interestingly, 
there is a positive relation between fungi damage and the percentage of cumaric, uh, of cumaric acid and ferulic acid. I also checked for partial correlation controlling for storage technologies, uh, relative humidity, the maximum relative humidity, but also altitude and still a high correlation between fungi damage and, and uh, ferulic acid and cumaric acid. And I don't have no hypothesis. <laughs> So uh, I'm still thinking about it, checking, because I, I never see something like this in, in the literature. So we are still, I'm still thinking on what we can explain this data, or how we can, not, not how we can explain this data. So rapidly presenting some chemical, some chemical data, we're checking for ether extract and acid value. Acid value of fat is a measure of the percentage of uh, free, af, free fat acid free fatty acid in the oil extracted, meaning when we notice an increase in the acid value of fat, this uh, is a result of bad storage condition. So when we look for data of, uh, of test cocoa, we notice an increase in free fatty acid content, no? which is normal with the condition of the storage. But we also notice a con uh, an increase in the acid value of in, in, in plastic bottle, meaning that even if plastic bottle succeed in, in controlling uh, post-harvest pest and maintaining seed quality, it is not the case for acid value. Acid value is generally related to, to uh, the increase in, in, in storage temperature. But Remember that we did not see any significant difference between uh, between the, the 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 average temperature, the, the monitoring of the average temperature inside the storage container. When we check for for the mem the same result in PETO, we notice an increase in, in polypropylene bag in microionized line, but also in, an increase in in hermetic technologies. In co when we compare with the the uh, the initial sample. So, basically, what we are showing here is that okay, we are controlling post harvest pest, we are controlling, uh, we are maintaining seed quality, but regarding some some quality parameters, we are not so good. But I think the fact that in peto temperature is really high, it is around. I mean, average temperature is around 34, 34 degree. So this may explain why. Uh, uh, why we notice an increase in the acid value. An increase in the acid value means that triglyceride, triglyceride inside the oil were hydrolyzed. But what are the sources of the enzyme? I mean, to make the hydrolysis of this uh, triglyceride, we need some enzymes. So where do these enzymes come? So it was a, a very interesting question, and I will see here, I will show here that you can notice correlation between fungi damage grain and uh, uh, acid value of, uh, of fat. So maybe fungi are the ones that bring, uh, how can I say, that, that bring the enzyme, the lipase enzyme that are hydrolyzing the triglyceride that we notice. So, so, so this explains wh why we notice an increase in the acid value of oil. Checking rapidly for other correlation, we can see that uh, germination is and normal seedling are negatively correlated with uh, insect damage and fungi damage and weight losses, meaning that the condition to preserve, uh, if we have a technology that preserve for insect damage and fungi damage, then probably it's also, it can also allow uh, maintaining seed quality, even though we saw that the result were different for micronized lime. There is also some, some positive correlation between flotation index, which is a physical parameter related to green hardness with uh, insect damage and fungi damage, while color difference are only related with insect damage. So basically, to conclude, we can say that hermetic technologies are, are effective in controlling post harvest pests in any climate condition, but only, it was very good in maintaining some seed and green some uh, seed, seed quality, but some green parameters only. 
Alternative storage technologies are also effective, but tend to be less effective in, in tropical conditions. Regarding seed quality, hermetic technologies are really interesting. Even though right now we are checking the relationship between quiescence and germination, since during uh, when 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 the level of oxygen is decreasing, then so grain enter in the quiescence uh, phases. So the relationship between these quiescence phases and germination are unclear. For if when we broke the hermeticity, I mean the moment we broke hermeticity and the time that we saw, we don't know exactly. Uh, the, the, the required duration in order to get a high germination. Inert dust is uh, also really uh, interesting, but and we need to but we need to check the effect on on grain quality, meaning here in Mexico, nistamalization. So this is basically the presentation of the result regarding the technical part of our work. So what next? Yeah, okay, maybe if we do this kind of, of promo if video, it didn't help <laughs> in, in, adop in the adoption of, of, of hermetic technology, but I think the scaling process of, of hermetic technologies are more complex than just showing the silos and, and hoping that farmers will adopt. So the work of Masagro between 2016 and 2018 has generated for more than 40, 45,000 of impact area. How this was generated, we, I, I would just like to present that we don't have uh, a, a scaling, a scaling plan as detailed as uh, as the people of PPP would like us to have. But we'd just like to present some exam, example, uh, some experience with the Masagro project. Now, talking uh, about, for example, the as, uh, of Ponsitlan in Jalisco. So, what happened there? There was free cycle of of models in 2016, between 2016 and 2018. And a network of extension area related to, to, to these models. So one thing that farmers used to do at the levantamiento of the models, they rate the technologies. We prefer this one, we prefer this one, we prefer this one. So what was the result? In 2018, after free cycle of, of models, farmers were convinced and they say, okay, right now we want to buy silos. We want to buy a silo. So through the hub connection, because there, there, there was no silos provider in Jalisco, but there was one in, in, in Michoacan. So people of the hub Bahio connected farmers with this silos provider, and then farmers decided to purchase 30 silos from their own after free cycle of models. So in my opinion, the key parameters are on, in this case of the presence of good collaborators that are doing very good training of farmers. So you can meet farmers and they can explain you how hermetic technologies work very well. But also, uh, there is also a socioeconomic factor because not only in Jalisco we have, uh, we have uh, good collaborators, but only there that farmers decided to buy uh, silos with their own money. So there is more investigation that is required here to understand these socioeconomic factors. I would like to present also the, the example of Guanajat Guanajuato uh, in Salvatierra and Jerecuaro. Here, they they, they, there was no need of, of free cycle of models, just two models in 2019, but also a network, a network of extension area. But what was really interesting here is that the work was coordinated with uh, health worker of uh, the municipalities that at each event come and explain to the, uh, to the farmers the adverse effect of, use, of using pesticide. So the fact that it was connected, connected with health worker, there was, there was a very, very high participation of farmers with more than sometimes 150 farmers part participating in an event, 150 farmers. So, at the result, in, in Guanajuato, there, 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 is, there, there are a lot of silos provider, so municipalities decided to help farmers to uh, buy some silo. But here, fa farmer, farmers are contributing by, 50 by paying 50% of, of the cost of silo while the municipality is 
bring in the, 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 the other 50 percent. So key parameter here is experience sharing because in this event, the, there were farmers that are already using silos that are, that are sharing the experience with the other one. But also connection with municipalities really help in, 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 in buying these silos, as I say, because an initial uh, the initial cost adquis acquisition cost of the silos are really high for small holder and they, not, they cannot handle it 100 percent. Also, there is some socioeconomic factor, in my opinion, that remain unclear that we would like, we would, we would like to investigate. So, but all of this, we, I would like to mention the key role of technology provider, because in some place here in Mexico, people like uh, micronized lime. In some place, they prefer hermetic bag. In some place, they prefer hermetic silos. So, Simit, which contribute to the establishment of this norm, which is the Mexican norm of, from the manufacturing of hermetic silos. We, we did some, some, some training on 16, of around 16, 69 uh, herreros. But this is not uh, sufficient because there, there is an annual follow-up of this herrero showing then why it is important to respect the norm, the, the, the norm established together. There is also uh, 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 an important part related to provider of hermetic bag. Here in Mexico, we only have grain pro that are uh, the, uh, grain pro bags that are available. But we are trying to bring uh, other other provider because we think, or I think, we think, it depends, that if there is a competition between the provider of bags, this may help. Uh, I mean, decreasing cost but also uh, spreading this technology here in Mexico. Also, uh, Rotoplas, uh, which is a provider of, of uh, container for water here in Mexico, are interesting in providing also some, some post harvest solution for storage. So right now we are working with them to, uh, in order to making these technologies available here in Mexico. So to conclude rapidly, uh, we are now working with people of PPP on a clear scaling plan using the scaling scan, which is a very interesting tool, uh, which, uh, which will allow, allow us to, to identify the strength, the strength and weakness of our, our scaling ambition. Uh, we also check in for the, the, the scaling ingredient. This is required time, but I'm pretty sure that the experience of other countries like Kenya will really help us in establishing our scaling ambition. Socioeconomic factors are really important, and understanding the role of gender uh, is crucial in, in this work because women, as uh, Carol, Carolina Camacho demonstrated in one uh, of her paper, are really interesting in post-harvest. There is also a part related to economic analysis uh, in which we are working with people uh, of, uh, I mean, the team of Victor. Other point, uh, agroecological management of, uh, of post-harvest using, for example, pheromone trap in order to avoid uh, uh, pests on field, shelling activities with the team of Yele, drying also with looking for, for, looking for uh, uh, low-cost dry, uh, low dryer, but also in others and the impact on nistamalization, we are working with Natalia and also some collaborator, uh, collaborator here in Mexico to check the effect of the use of inert dust on the quality of, of the tortilla. Yeah, I would, like, I would like to finish my presentation by acknowledging uh, all of the farmers with whom we are working here in Mexico. It is a very, uh, it is important to mention the contribution. Here we have people of, of, of Chiapas here in Oaxaca and here collaborator from, from Chihuahua. It's important also to thank all of the collaborator, national and international uh, that are providing fund for this research. And I would like to finish uh, by acknowledging uh, my team, but also people of, of Maze Quality Lab, and a lot of people, Juan, uh, Yele, Carolina, uh, Denise even, because we have some talk relating to, to seed quality parameter, Kai uh, and Juan, uh, Juan, Juan, who, who is giving a lot of help uh, in, in drawing the map. And thank you very much.
I have a question about um, the graph and all the things that impact um, post-harvest. Yes. Uh, it's quite difficult to interpret how both criollo and hybrid can have a significant impact on storage. Yeah, how, I was, how do you explain that? Yeah, I was pretty sure that you would ask me this question. <laughs> okay, here uh, it is important to mention that there is more hybrid in, in the platform than Criollo, so it is difficult to draw a conclusion only using for this data. But as you can see here, you can see that they have, they have the, the same weight, you know, basically the same weight, meaning that with the, the result that we have right now, we cannot say that hybrid is better than, than, than Criollo, even though if you check for results here, you can see that Criollo are more attacked by hybrid, which is totally the contrary of what people say, I mean, in, 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 in the papers, no? Because they used to say that in Africa, even not they used to say, I even noticed that during my experience in Africa, hybrid in Africa are more attacked than, than, than Criollo because Criollo were adaptive for the condition. But here in Mexico, is the con it, is, it is the opposite trend. It is the opposite trend, and we will probably need more data to understand what is happening. But here, the, 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 the result just said that the, the, the fact that to have hybrid or criollo have the same weight. Significant, but the same weight. You can also check it here in the, in the graph where you have criollo here and you have hybrid here. I mean, opposite way. You are not satisfied? No more than I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The members of the that we discussed that creatures grow more on uh, hot environments. Exactly, and also. And the humidity also. And there is a relation between the way the place in which you got the creatures. Exactly. That means that here you are presented more the relations between all the Right. Right. Yeah, um, but do you think it's fair to lump all the land rays and all the hybrids together? For instance, uh, research in, in blue maize, a lot of the uh, processors said that the blue maize is softer, right, and more damage more easily in storage, right? So exactly. my question is, would we need different storage systems for different varieties of maize? Um, or you, what's your opinion on that? Uh, no, I don't think so, because I think hermetic technologies work very well, even if it is blue maze. We have some result. In fact, in, in this database, we also collected, I mean, we also mentioned the color of the green, but most of the sample were, were, uh, were of white color. So including this in the analysis was not interesting. So this is why we remove it. But I think for blue for blue maize, uh, no need. Uh, hermetic technologies also work very well. And in fact, you know, blue maize have a high content in ferulic acid, but it is highly attacked by 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 pests. So, this result of correlation between uh, absence of correlation in. Okay, so Natalia is thinking. The, <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> I was thinking that you 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 think the opposite, but. <laughs> um, as long as we're on this figure, can I throw in another question? No, go back. Okay. Go back. So the one that I'm no, 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 the one that you had for the arrows with all the arrows. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the one that I'm really confused about is that GMCI. That's green moisture content. At the, at the beginning. Presents the idea that. Grain moisture content has no impact or it's not important, and I'm completely do not agree with that idea. Also, you don't have the other variable grain moisture content final. It doesn't seem to be here in your figure. I don't know what that means, but that should be important too, even though it's not in the figure. Can you explain why grain moisture content would not be an important variable here? Yes, of course. Uh, you know, we are using grain moisture content uh, as a predictor at the beginning. And we are here in, in a small holder farming condition. And grain are too dry in, because they, they, they delay harvest. 
So basically, grain have the comp uh, moisture content between 11 and, and, and 10, 11, 10. Sometimes we even have moisture content at 8%. So these, I mean, in a small home. I don't know what's wrong with that. That's fine. Sorry? I don't know what, what is wrong with the having between 8 and 11 percent no, rain so moisture content. So that this, should be helping, helping your storage results. Of course. So this is why here it is not an important parameter. Because, it, because there's no difference? Because it's all the same? So there's basically no variation in that trade? Uh, that there is some variation, but you know, because since it is below 13 percent, so it does not have an impact on the final, uh, uh, the final uh, percentage of insect damage grain or, or weight losses. Oh, so it's all there's no variation and it's all. No, there wild. is there is some variation. There is some variation. You know, sometimes, for example, in the place of Veracruz, you have grain uh, around 13, uh, 13, uh, uh, 12. Mm -hmm. While, for example, in, in Yucatan, you may have. A grain moisture content uh, around eight, nine. But again, all of these are below the, the 13, uh, the 13 uh, level, which is considered a, a safe moisture content of, of grain. So, in my opinion, this is why it is not significant. Well, you know, if you have grain moisture contents that low, you should be have you should not be having insect and fungus problems. That's exactly. That's, that's, but, that's what it's saying. Exactly. I, I really don't understand this figure. This yeah. makes no sense to me. Why? So it, I, I mean, yeah, Sylvanas, you can explain to me later. Of course. But it does not make sense to me, this. So <laughs> you got to do a little better on explaining how that works. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Kate. Yeah. Uh, thank you, and uh, thank you for the presentation. I'm sorry that I don't know very much about the post harvest technology, but I was wondering in the uncontrolled conditions, is there a way that when you, do you go to take samples and when you take those samples, is there a way to assess how well people apply the technologies? Because you were mentioning the importance of training. Of course. Um, so I was just wondering, can you check the ones that were not correctly sealed had higher levels of like, insects, et cetera? <laughs> Okay, well, let me give you an example related to hermetic silos. You know, uh, before the use of hermetic silo, we check for hermeticity. And there is basically two kind of tests uh, to check hermeticity of silo, using, for example, uh, air in the case of, of uh, uh, control condition, while uh, in non-control condition, not everybody have a compressor. So they check it with with water, but using air is more efficient than using water. So in that case, even if they notice that the uh, hermetic silo is, uh, how can I say, is, I mean, the, the water, the water uh, test work very well, it might have a level of oxygen, so you still have some, some, some damage inside the silos. No? So, in my opinion, this may explain. I mean, con non control conditions are more, how can I say, are more, it is a, it, it a very good draw of the condition of farmers, no? In comparison with a uh, platform where we are taking care of everything, we are checking for, for sanitation, everything. So I think this kind of comparison uh, in a place where we have a very good control of all, all of the factors and a place where not all of the factors are controlled to see. I mean, it would, the, the result was not the same. So I think this may explain the difference that we notice. Even though we train, we train, uh, we train uh, extension workers that are in charge of this, as this trial. But you know, a, 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 platform, a platform responsible is more, is more, he know that it is for research. He need to take care about a lot of parameters. While in the case of extension uh, of module, it is more the extension part that is showing in comparison with the research part. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Ivan. I think, uh, I mean, I agree with Denise that the graphs are a little bit confusing. Okay. And maybe also it's because you are mixing so many things there. So even if you are talking about uh, native 
native maize and hybrids, we know that they have different uh, kernel hardness. And I think it's more important to differentiate them by, by that rather than to generalize uh, criollos and hybrids, yeah? And, and also in the graphs, there are so many different parameters, you know, <laughs> yes. that make the things a, a little bit uh, confusing. Maybe it's clear for you that you have conducted the research, <laughs> but for the others, it's like, wow. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, it's difficult to, to draw a conclusion. Just, just uh, a general comment. On okay. the other hand, related to the ferulic um, compounds, you have to take in account that uh, all the analysis were done in whole grain. And perhaps previous uh, studies were done in ferulic compounds on the pericard only. So the concentration will vary. And also, you have to take in account that this is total ferulic compounds, uh, total phenolic um, acids. But uh, you have to see if the correlation is with the bound ones or with the free ones. So that's something to consider later on. Yeah. Uh, I, I totally agree with you uh, the, uh, with the path relating to ferulic acid and I can tell you that I, I check for all of these parameters and so I was afraid I'd be in trouble with, with, with this kind of result <laughs> showing that there is a positive relation between a, a relationship between ferulic acid and, and insect damage. We can still continue talking about it. No? Add a comment? Okay. Yeah, I'd, be, I'd be very curious to really dig into the results that they got early on at Simmon versus the results you get before you start saying that I've disproved <laughs> all that research that's been done in the past. You've got to make sure that, you know, I mean, their focus could have been quite different from your focus. And they're doing their, all their measuring and everything in a different way. So that's got to be really important. I mean, they were, bre they were looking, they were breeding, you know, in those days. They were looking for what do we need to select for and, and, you know, to get better resistance to pests. And that's not your focus. You're not focusing on how do I make the maze better? You know, how am I breeding to make it better? You're focusing on how do I, how do I make it live longer and in storage and uh, I don't know we're gonna have to discuss this whole moisture thing you know <laughs> I, I mean I am 100% sure make it dry keep it dry that's it it's so simple but it's really important I don't think you're you're taking that into consideration no, but you know, you know, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, you know, I'm a dry, I'm a drying specialist. You know, <laughs> so I know the importance of drying. I, I'm, 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 so, in my opinion, moisture content was not uh, si significant in this case of study because the grain are too dry. I, I don't get that. I still do not get that. Okay. If the grain is too dry, you shouldn't be seeing so much fungus or so much insects. They should be dead. No, they're not there. It's, they all start dry, and then some of those you put in a hermetic container, so those start dry and they stay dry, like you say. Yeah. And then there's grain that you don't put in a hermetic container so that it's subject to the air around it, and if it's moist air, it will increase in moisture. And those are the differences that we see later, but if you look then at the relation between, because they're initially all dry, the initial moisture content doesn't have an effect on the damages that we see later on. It's really, it's not a, it's not really a very important point in the discussion here, because in these control conditions and in all the modules we do, we know that moisture content is important, so we make sure that we only store the grain when it's dry enough to we also have it and uh, personally I check I check uh, uh, of moisture content at the end sometimes when we use and it is also really dry sometimes uh, in the case of micronized lime we can notice an increase in moisture content in the case uh, in uh, environment like Chiapas, Yucatan you can notice an increase in moisture content but 
it is only with the, tri the treatment with ina uh, dust that you can notice that. If not, rain are still too dry. Okay. Other question? Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome.